Take two. My computer crashed. Don't know why. TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Discord where you can drop in any requests and be a part of the community. You know, just chop it up if you want to. Link to this is down in the description. Uh, we also got Patreon. Hold on, let me see if it's at the screen I want it to be at now. Yes, we got Patreon. Uh, this is where you can watch any uh, videos that we can't put on YouTube, such as Top Boy, such as the movies. People, uh, just, people just do nothing. Friday night, night uh, Friday night dinner. Um, the list is right here. You can check it out. And this is my live. If you miss any of my live, the shorts from the lives be on here and. You know, it's just a good time, man. This is Marvin Herbert tells his story of getting shot in the eye. Marvin Herbert, episode 19. This is um, the Blue Tick Show. This is season two of the Blue Tick Show. Okay, I had never heard of them. So salute, man. Let's subscribe because that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the first responders for liking videos before we even watch them. You know what I'm saying? Let's just get into it, man. And I, I am familiar with Marvin Herbert. I've done, I've watched his uh, Lad Bibles and whatever, so I'm familiar. Let's get into it. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. This is season two, all about crime. And opposite me today, we've got the one and only Marvin Herbert. He's known for 20 plus murder investigations. He's- All about crime, that's, that's promising. The man, the myth, the legend. Marvin, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on. How are you? Um, well, my brother. Do you know what? Um, to put it eloquently, I've turned out better than I imagined. Conf I see. Shit. You got on the leather. I don't know if that's a jacket or a button-up, but they got a collar on it. Turtleneck to the top. Fresh look gold tea. Look healthy. You got a haircut this time. You know what I'm saying? Eyebrows almost look like you got them done. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Peaky Blinders hat. You put it together today. Further than I ever dreamed. And I'm doing things I never thought were possible. Well, that made me emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this, 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 serious, this, yeah? This, yeah, man. Like, it's, it's next, what I'm doing is next level. Like, no one ever thought that I'd do what I'm doing now. Even earlier, you're just on the phone saying you're going to train the Met. Like, well, not train them, I'm no, going to facilitate courses with the Met and engage and do things within the Met, with the Met, and I'm going to tell them my story. I'm going to try to create some kind of... What's the Met? Because when I hear the Met, I hear, like, Met, Met Police Station, like, Met Police. Like, is, there, is that a TV show or something in the UK? Amalgamation with the community of urban England. Um, the Met and music, sports and intelligence, really. So there's a, a greater plan ahead, afoot, I should say, a greater plan afoot, and uh, hopefully it'll be received well because I do believe that everybody wants to make money, live happy and live in peace. Do you know what I mean? 100%. So if we can create that through... Un, so called unethical avenues in certain worlds and languages, then why not give it a try? Nothing else has happened or worked so far. Yeah. So I do believe that Herbert Mark. Yeah, uh, mics is off a little bit. It's like a little latency between the mic and the lips. S slight. I've been put. It's a bandwidth issue or somewhere. Plugged in and y'all set up, it's plugged in, something's not hitting right. Jex is my new CIC company. He's uh, gonna steer the way towards change for the, the like-minded youth like myself. I mean, it's, yeah. about, it's about trying to change what I help develop, design and create with all the madness on the road today, do you know what I mean? It's just being a part of that criminal fraternity. For many of the people who don't know who you are, not sure if there is many people because every single person I've said I'm doing this podcast because was like, oh my God, yeah, I know him. Oh my God, I know him. I've heard of him. I've watched his thing. I want people who are new to the to your life story to understand, obviously, 
who you are and what you've asked. So if we can throw it back to why you're a lifelong criminal, what happened, and if we could take it all the way back to your childhood and explain some memories from your childhood, I'm sure you have some good memories and bad memories. What's going on? I hope you're all enjoying the episode so far. Make sure you all scroll down. It's already I already did it. Mirrored. Blind. So hit subscribe. I have a, a mirrored of knowledgeable. I think it's been like a year and a half since we watched this old one. So this is, you know. Experiences. Make some new stuff. And learning. You know, it's, memories are just all learning. It's everything you've got to learn in life. But yeah, it started um, in 2002. No, it started in 1990. 1972, 1972. So what was happening? All my kids' birthdays just flashed in front of my eyes. Then, <laughs> right, so um, my life began in 1972 in Liverpool. I was born in Fazatley Hospital. I forgot he was of Liverpool. Was an early morning birth. Um, born a year with a rat, believe it or not. Um, yeah, we lived in Kirby first. Master Splinters are rats, so hey, there's there's some good ones. Lasting memories that I have. All the lasting memories I've got are all traumas, so like I've said Sorry. I fell over on a bottle in Kirby, broke my leg out to get stitches. The bottle went through this leg, went through the right thigh, popped out, and I had to get stitches in that. that Wait a minute, a bottle? Like what kind of bottle was that? A steel reinforced bottle? How did it go through your leg? That's crazy. Where did you fall from? The second floor? Like what? The is... first bit of trauma. Then my dad burnt my hand for setting the house on fire in that house, which I never knew about until after my third first podcast. So my mom said, "Didn't you remember this?" I said, "No." Nah. So my dad burnt my hand at 18 months old when me and my brother was playing. Dares, so who could put their foot in the fire the longest? This is when we used to have coal fires back in yeah, the day. Yeah. So I put my foot in and held it in there longer than him, but I had a coal, a hot rock of coal stuck to my shoe. So as I've pulled it out, the rock's gone into the curtains, is flammed up, and the has been burnt down. That burnt my hand for that. And then I got run over when I was about five. Dang! Got all. You're not even 10 yet. You didn't have you didn't, a bottle through the leg, burnt down the house, got your hand burnt up. Um, white pin. Hit head by a car at five. Five. Got all um, white pins put on my leg. A who? And then had a pretty, although it sounds normal, we just had, to me, <laughs> to me we had a pretty normal, to me it was normal, so getting up, it was very hectic indoors. Brothers, I'd like, there was four brothers and sisters living in one house. So, two so, boys, two girls, and then my dad's extended family. My dad had kids with loads of women. So, my dad had, I, I believe, 17 or 18 kids, and he's lost two. So, um, I don't know. And what was, what was your dad like as a, as a father? Well, I've got a split. I've got kind of split feelings about my dad now because before I used to hate him, I really did hate him. Like It gave me the driving force to sort of become the man I've become because of the hatred I felt because of the abandonment issues I had as a kid, the neglect issues I had as a kid. And then basically it wasn't until my dad died. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear about that. Mm. He died of cancer 2016 but that's another story was he on a straight and narrow path when he oh. no nah, he never was he done put it this way if you know anything about weed right okay sensimenia weed used to come really hard and black and it used to be compressed right and then that stopped I believe circulating after 2016 because my dad died because my dad basically done that for years. I remember I used to nick it off him. Like everybody that knows me from the criminal world when I was a kid knows I used to get all the puff. I used to nick loads of puff from my dad, like I'd bags of it, like South Kilburn, Kilburn, Swiss Cottage, Camden, like I was the man for puff. I used to lay all the kids on puff in school. Do you know what I mean? Because I used to nick carry bags with my dad. 
and I'll tell you the story, right? So I used to get carry bags of weed and shit off my dad, right? And I used to sell it to all my brother's mates. But I used to sell them carrier bags yeah. for fifty pound. A whole carrier yeah. bag of it. I didn't I, I was So eight, you never knew the price of it, you were eight, just trying nine, to ten. I just yeah, knew yeah. they wanted it, right? Hey, you was the, the ultimate plug, boy. They was, hey, hit Marvin up. He, I don't know if he know the, what he doing or not, but he got the carrier bag with that joint in it. Fifty fifty dollars, okay. So now goes Haverstock, yeah. So when I went to Haverstock, yeah, we went carnival, yeah. Uh -huh. So we've all chipped in up salamis, right? Kilvanaro chipped in to get a better load of puff. Yeah. Um, about ten, eleven of us, five of each. I'm thinking, bag of weed. Bag of weed. Yeah. Come back with these little strips, bro. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. and he was like, that's the weed. And I was like, no, he said one each. And I was like, what? I'll go all that for raw. And that was when the penny dropped for me, what I'd been giving away to all the old lot. So from 11 years of age, I started making proper dough. Did he ever catch you stealing his stuff? What's going on, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube. God damn. I ain't even mad at it. I feel it. Thank you. Yeah, he batted me a few times, but we, I was too smart for him, innit? Because what it was, when we were kids, adults don't pay attention to kids. Yeah. 10, 11, 12. They don't pay attention. So I just listen to them, mate. And find out where all their gear's going, <laughs> innit? Find out where they're leaving it and all shit like that. Do you know what I mean? And then just, I'll do things like my dad will go to the gambling house over um, Church Road, yeah? And then I'll say to one of his mates, oh, let me come with you. Yeah. And he go, oh, come on in, son. My dad don't know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I'd go with them and clap them out. And then they'd come back and they'd be like, bro, I lost this thing. You know, I don't know where this thing is. And they're like... <laughs> I wonder where it is. Yeah, I'll <laughs> dab my balls, mate. I'll clap them all out. So now there's a lot of my dad's mates that are going to be seeing all these podcasts and their little... It was him. Because when I used to come... I'd see my dad arguing with them. I'll give you <clears throat> X a man. Because Puff comes in bales. Yeah. Like a ton is, I think, 35 bales. I don't know. Right, so, right, so. People don't know, no. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I follow. Puff comes in bales, right? What's a bale? It's like, a, it's, a, it's a Moroccan bale. Of, it's like a certain amount, of, I think it's 35 keys per bale. Okay. Or so, I don't know, it's something, the certain amount, I, I'm not, I can't remember all the figures yeah, yeah, now, yeah, of course. but I think 35 bales is a ton, which is a thousand kilos. So do the math, I don't know. Yeah. I used to cut. You gotta know, other stuff come in bales as well, so you just, Plug it in. What are you saying? Some of the bows and nick <laughs> bows out. Yeah. So they wouldn't. Like, obviously, I was a kid. I didn't think they'd know. Grass coming, bales, hay coming, bales, something like that. You nick, know? I would know. I'm nicking this bar and that bar. And then there was slabs of. Um, it was like zero zero. Right, it was like soft black, but it used to come in ten pound slabs yeah. and twenty pound slabs. And they used to use like a big paper cutting mache to carve it up. But then basically, because I used to go to all the lockups, so I was a little kid in the car, so everyone wanted a kid in the car so they didn't get stopped yeah, by the police, yeah? Because yeah, yeah. yeah? that back in the 80s and 90s, uh, well, 70s and 80s it would be then, but 70s and 80s, there was no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, so kids needed to be with their kids, with their dad, it was yeah. a smother kind of, it was a, so I'm with my dad going everywhere, so I see where people hid things. So obviously I was going all over London when I was eight, nine, so when I'd see things, I'd think, raw. I'm coming back for that. Yeah, yeah, so I'd back. go back and rob my dad's mates, lockups and stashes, and, and then they'll be blaming each other, but I'll be laughing with my mates. Yeah. So I caused murders in the fraternity for people, because I, I, as a kid, I didn't realize. Man, you was, ha, <laughs> hey, you was hitting licks and didn't even know you was hitting licks and getting people crossed out because of it. That's tough. I realized what I was doing. So your dad was making a lot of money. My mum, Listen, you don't, see, again, yeah, this is another thing. No one makes no money in that game, you know, on the road. You only make money if you're at source mm. and you're not even in England. You make money. If you're in England selling this shit, you're not making no money. You're not making no money. So all these big drug dealers no, who are saying making they're no making money. They're, they're talking shit, mate. They're talking shit. They're talking shit. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a simple rationale. So if you could buy a product yeah. for £7,000, Yep. Right? 7,000 pounds. And then you can sell that product for 18,000 pounds there. Yeah. Why are you bringing it on? 7,000 pounds here. Yeah. And you can sell it for 18,000 pounds here. Why are you bringing it home? This ain't nowhere near home. Ain't nowhere near home. 
Why are you bringing it home? It makes no sense. Why? Why? Because, because it's not yours. Yeah. It's not yours. So you're getting put on here. And then you're bringing it back and you're getting, it's, you're paying the 18, not the seven. No, 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 you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Are we paying no. that? There, you may pay 24 to 26. So then you've got to sell it at 30, yeah. No, you've got to get it home first. Oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, so another a couple of quid goes on top of that. So you're making fuck all. Okay, but you tell me they make loads of money. True. <laughs> true, true. You see what I'm okay, saying? Fair so enough, fair only, one, only one portion of that. Nah, man. I, yeah, maybe the small time, but I, I don't know about that one. The math ain't mathing for me. I know I know in Chicago for sure you're not making no, like, you might as well just work a minimum wage job. No, nah, nah, you're right. With, with my logic that I just said, you gotta be right. I always thought, like, why do people even trap that? Because you can't be like it doesn't it doesn't even look good if game makes money. Only the big boss. Only makes the top. Money. No, no, it's not even a big boss. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's no, it's huh? not. No, it's not. Because everything's a network. It's the same as any company, any business. It's all a network, and it's about profits. Simple. So if you keep the business attribute applied to the product, then you don't fail. When you start going street back door, cheap, 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 so so so, it falls apart because the system's gone. So what they could do, what they could do, and I'm not suggesting it <laughs> by any minute, by any means, right? So watch. All the London villains, yeah. all the English villains, all the proper villains, right? What they could do. Right? Now, I'm not saying I've done this, I'm not saying I know people have done it, but this is okay, a reality. Okay, okay, okay. So what they do, they pay seven grand there, they get a load of grub from over there. Yeah. Seven grand. And what they do, they get a load of bits, yeah? That are dispensable product because they've got their millions of pound profit. Yeah, yeah. So what they do with a dispensable product that they can burn, they give it to their mates. I say, get on your feet, son. Sell it for what you want. Do they do that? Nah, nah. Because they're not businessmen. They're all scumbag grooming, no good. Every single one of them. But now, nah, I weren't the biggest of the tree. I weren't at the top of the ladder, right? But I'll tell you something for free. I never had to touch anything. I never had a kilo of gear in my car. Never. I wouldn't be 10 miles within a bit of product. When, he's, when, he's, when he was just telling that story, was he talking about... Was he talking about Class A or was he talking about marijuana? Because if he was talking about marijuana, I can kind of see what he's talking about. But if he was talking about Class A, no. Uh, no. Nah. Hell no, nah, that ain't <laughs> no sir. <laughs> if you really bought your money and 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 and, 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 and nah, I ain't even going. <laughs> if I'm at source, if I'm at source, why am I going near yeah. the product? Yeah, that's true. If though. I'm at source, why am I going near the product? Right, so you hear a lot of things on platforms about people and strategies and systems but I'm not here glamorizing my life because I waste my life as a load of shit but what I do see is a load of nonsense it's a load of nonsense now what you do see are drivers logistics pilots and tools that's all they were that's all they were that's all they were pilots delivery tools and logistics that's it they all got burnt they all washed up so and everyone's more so, knows that, mate. So if you was never around the product, yeah, and you never, how, how come you have done? How long have you done inside total? Fourteen years in total. And how did you was guns any of that, and violence? So none of that was drug related. No, you never got caught. Nothing drug related. No. Oh no, I'll tell a lie. I threw an ounce of crack, an ounce of heroin, and a half a bar of puff over the wall of Camp Hill. And you got back for that. And I got nicked for it. Yeah. But everything else was gun related, crime related. Violence and just violence. I should have bought my pre-cons. I got pre-cons, I got my DBS check. It's just pure violence. I was just at it for at it purpose. Yeah. From the lab Bible, we know this was a violent individual. And I didn't care. He was really on that. Wasn't he into it with, uh, what's his name? Was it Danny G or Dan G or what's his name? He was into it. They was going back and forth for a while. And who you was, you had to prove you was odd. And I didn't give a fuck, you had to stab, shoot, or kill me. And I didn't care. And this is the difference with these kids now. They're all going like they don't care. They do care. They do care. I had big men pissing and shitting their pants. 
I've had people beaten up at their front doors. I've had people slapped in their house. I've, they're, they're, come on, they're, they're, they're not as violent as they make her. Now, I was the epicenter of violence. You, just, I lived you on. just didn't give a fuck. No, it wasn't. Like that. Well, it wasn't that I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, it was. I couldn't. I couldn't afford to give a fuck. Why? 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 Because no one fucking asked that question. And I'll tell you why. Because I was on my own. <laughs> Me. Yeah, little old Marv, <laughs> mad Marv, nutty Marv. I, I don't think people call you little anymore. No, but what I'm saying is, I was on my own everywhere I went. Yeah. I had it with everyone on my own, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I never, I never needed firms. I don't need firms. I invited firms away. I invited firms on holiday. I invited firms to do shit. I invited people to earn money. So you know I mean, I give people opportunities. No one's give me nothing, bro, apart from one man, Daniel Kinahan. He's the only man on this planet oh, giving me Kinahan. anything. Do you know what I mean? And he give me life, yeah? He give me life. And I don't give a monkeys about how much trauma or drama that they're going through or how much that they're getting. He's my pal. He's my friend. He's my family. And I'll never deny that man for as long as I live. Like, that man's done everything for me to put me here today. Do you know what I'm saying? And I can yeah. never forget that. And no disrespect to anything or any... Sounds like a loyal dude. ...or anyone, but I'm going into the Met Police next week to the cadets. I've just done a, a, a passing out parade in December. I'm going in again to talk to some of the young cadets about what they're about to get involved in. And then moving forward, I'm going to be doing other things. And stay tuned because ITV, nine o'clock on the 17th of January, Marvin's on ITV, son. Serious? Yeah, I'm on ITV, son, yeah. And then, you know what the thing is, if someone told Marvin 30 years ago, you're going to be going into the Met Police speaking to the ca cadets. Okay, so it is the police. It you would have laughed in their no, no, face. No, no, mate, 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 mate. You would have laughed in I their face. Laughed. Everyone else would have laughed. As well, yeah. I mean, but you would have said, fuck it was, that. It was never, I, I, I never, ever, 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 and I'm telling you, I never even imagined going straight. I actually lived, breathed, and ate that world, and that's why I'm glad I was me, because there weren't no one in it that was like me. Like, there were similar people, don't get me wrong, along the way in different countries, yeah? yeah, yeah. But in England, you in England, no, we weren't. I was anything. I was Marvin Herbert, and no one could take a fucking liberty with me. Those that tried, learned they couldn't. In the grace of God, I should say, yeah, <laughs> nothing bad happened to me. Uh, but, Marvin, already in this mug with an extra large bullet blender cup. The eye situation. Everyone's seen you talk about what happened, where yeah. you got shot in the face, in the head. Yeah, well, got shot in my eye, bro. Oh my God, there was liquid, y'all. Okay, so, okay, just, just everybody man up, okay? I was shot in my eye. Point blank range in the eye. That's what I'm saying, Joe. Woo! Tell us that. Oh. Ain't no ball in there. Ain't no retina, ain't no, ain't, ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Ain't none of the pieces. Oh, sorry. No, sorry what, you know, see? You All it is is pink. And yet, bruv, your oh. balls ain't dropped. <laughs> Raw brother, you get me. What a mad thing. <laughs> How did hey. that happen? I got shot in it. Put your eye back in, my boy. Right, so obviously, living a life from a kid, Liverpool, moving up to. No, London. hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, we ain't just. Thumbnail. <laughs> Oh man, that's you moving mad. Oh my, I mean, it is what it is, you know, but you know, it was just shocking. I was very sort of uh isolated growing. You don't need no lubrication for your eyelids. I'm very curious about this. Like, so what, like, you just you just rub that off, and now it's like. It don't need no moisture so you can blink properly. Go back. Just a little bit. Very sort of uh Blink. Isolated growing up. I felt abandoned a lot of the time. I was very insecure in my identity. So I had to It don't blink. Find ways to fit in. And I learned very young and very quick that violence was a good way. People needed to be protected, people liked, people that could fight, people liked tear up and I like beating people up. It don't blink, okay. 
I didn't know that. That's interesting. Four people that I liked, and it was just one of them things. I fought people's battles, and I was one of them people that enjoyed it. If you thought you was bad, I'd find someone that didn't like you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I'd say, do you like him? I'd say, well, I'll do it. I'll deal with it. Give me this and give me that. I'll do it. Give me this and give me that. So I had puff, sniff, drink, clubs, cars, all around the world for helping people. I said, listen, I've ever asked you for that. Never blank me, you know. Fucking screen. You know what I've done for you? <laughs> One of them moves, yeah. you know what I mean? I was very manipulative. So if I wanted something, I'd give you something so you could never refuse me. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'd do, I was very calculated as a kid. I wasn't stupid. So everything was double loaded with me. Everything was prepared well, but everyone benefited. That's why I, that's why I don't really let nobody do no favors for me. Especially like in the streets, I ain't, nah, you ain't, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Yeah. I never took anything from anybody, and that's one thing I can stand and say, and everybody knows that. So, I mean, I've never, I've got close friends of mine yeah, who have wipe about money that never got paid when we were kids, or, you know, like little things <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but of there ain't a man on this planet that can say about, I owe him a penny. Well, like I said, people from my childhood can, because I can't remember who I owe from when I was a kid, or, but I know in business, seriously, when I got involved in the serious nature of stuff, I never owed no one nothing, because I got my own bits. Do you know what I mean? So, I've robbed my own vans. When I've robbed security vans, I've robbed security vans. Do you know what I'm saying? So I never watched, waited and done nothing. No, no. I went out and done it myself. I got arrested and then I got put under investigation for maybe two, three years worth of armed robberies. Um, that never materialised into a conviction. Um, a couple of shootings, uh, a few murders. There was Did nine... you ever get convicted for a murder? No, no, never no. Never been no. convicted? No. There's, this is another thing, right? It's, now nah, they've covered their tracks with this association law. Because if this law would have been out when I was about, we'd all be fucked. Do you know what I mean? But What's the law? In the 80s and 90s, everyone was getting shot and killed. It weren't uncommon. It weren't... It was normal back then. It was normalised back then. It was part of our world, and it? it? was part of our reality. When we learned to accept it, live with it, and cry a tear, get over it, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I've said before, it's barbaric insanity. Do you know what I mean? And it's sad to believe that I, I believed in that life for so long, if that makes sense. Yeah, that you know what I mean, it was just, it's just madness. And it's, because I was always searching for better and always wanting better. Nothing was ever good enough. So when I met all the villains throughout all my journey, they was never good enough. And that's why everyone always says, Marvin thinks he's better than everyone. I don't think I'm better than everyone, but that's not good enough for me. What was it like in prison? I feel that. I feel that. Uh, people, a lot of people do that now because you got standards for yourself. You think I'm better than no, I don't think I'm better than you. I, my standards is just not where yours is at. You feel me? I can't live like that. I gotta have, you know what I'm saying? I gotta do it this way. I, I, there's minimum requirements that I have that might be higher than your minimum requirements. That's all. That don't make me better than you. That just make me uh. That just make me. What, what's the word I'm looking for? That makes me think. That makes my goals higher than yours, or something. That makes my threshold higher than yours. I don't know. Prison. So prison started in 1985 for me. Yeah. 1985. Yeah. So I went wow. away in 1985, and basically. Was you born in '76? 1985. I was a gun carrying, gun slinging, crack. Cocaine head, ecstasy, that is dressed good. exactly the same as this, believe it or not. <laughs> not a is, good I'm not yeah, yeah. This is how I dress. I've dressed the same forever. You've never changed? No, and I haven't. And everyone that knows me will tell you, no, he's dressed the same all the time. Brown shoes, jeans, leather jackets. <laughs> like. I'd like to <laughs> take this moment, you know what I'm saying, real quick, real quick, to say I beg to differ. I would like to take this moment and point to exhibit, exhibit A. <laughs> this ain't it. Y'all see the book? That ain't, that is, I'm just saying, I'm taking this moment to, you know, maybe he was just, okay, maybe what he's saying is when I was up and when I had money and I was doing what I was doing, I was dressed a certain way. Everybody gets hard times, but like, I think Lab Bible was the end of his hard times or the beginning of his, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's your outfit. Uh, yeah, it's just, I've, I've, I've just got, 
I've got now it's brown and blue. Everything's blue and brown. That's true. Like, I mean, it's always been the same aqua school. Okay, I guess if you're saying brand name, he did have on brand name stuff. You know, it was you smooth. You a smooth criminal right here. You real smooth. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? So I've always dressed a certain way. I've always looked a certain way. I've never changed the way I look. I don't wear loads of different brands. I only wear simple stuff. Do you know what I mean? So uh, the way I've looked, I've looked the same way forever. So even these, I wore these forever. I wore these in the eighties and the nineties. Do you know what I mean? Right, so we was just self developing young kids and we grew up in a world where character charisma and insight got you into everywhere and because we started making money very young we was we learned a lot by traveling so i mean so i traveled all around the country traveled all around europe and we just made money and dumb things like nowadays they don't do nothing they're a bit sort of dormant the youngsters they're, they're kind of lost where we had a bit of direction. We were going places, we were doing things, you know what I mean? But when your life did obviously pause and you went to prison, was that a bit of like a kick in the face? Like, fuck, they caught me. I was like, <laughs> fuck it. Let's see what it's all about now, isn't it? So, fuck it. Because the worst thing they could do is put you in prison. They put you in there. Did you, or was it hard for you? Yeah, they spit in these old cells. I can't remember the name of them. But you go to these old cells and you go felt and watch yeah, stuff yeah. and all these places, right? And uh, I remember going in there, and I had a little, 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 little I had a, a cashmere jacket with leather sleeves like this. Yeah. From Gant, right? I'll never forget it. Yeah, so yeah. I had a Gant body jacket, trousers, and I walked in, I got, because you used to be able to take snack, 200 snack, and my brief then was sweet. So I had my puff, my brief, my, everything was sweet. So I walked in, and now I'm going into a holding cell with loads of people. So I thought, if anyone says anything to me, you just do it. it, yeah. So I mean, so I walked in. He's got me, you got a snout, mate. So I just switched on and said, Want what? I went, snout. I said, For what? For what? Mm. And he's like, Only one. I said, Ain't gonna fuck all, mate. What? He's like, No, I'm all right, mate. Cool. I said, Don't anybody fucking ask me for nothing in here. I don't know none of you. I want to talk to no. I just sat down. I thought, If someone says something, he's got to kick off. No one said nothing. Then we got to Felton. And then a couple of people come up to me in Felton and said, Oh, do you know? You gotta see, he set the tone early in that one. This one, do you know that one? I was like, yeah, yeah, why? And I was like, no, we here, here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, yeah, I know him. Like, I didn't know them that well. I knew who they were. And they mentioned a couple of names, then got on the wing. Do you have any fights in there, any problems? They were non-stop, mate. Oh, seriously? Non yeah, like non-stop. Yeah, this is Marvin. What you think? You, you ain't listen? How he came into the first place? Yeah, yeah, fight. You get in there, just kicks off, isn't it? Some cheeky little thinks he's a bad man he's like blah blah like, i'll give you an example i won't i've gone in the shower okay i walks in the shower there's a geezer in the shower right there's one shower and there's about 20 showers so i walks in i said you're gonna be long mate he went no nah, no nah, not too long mate i went all right sweet so i've sat on the edge of the thing he's washed his hair washed mm. himself so i'm sitting on the edge of the bath waiting for him to get out so i washed his hair washed his body you think he's gonna get yeah. out right no nah. starts again well, yeah and then he put conditioner on. And he's telling me about weight for my conditioner. Yeah. How you gonna rush that man body routine? He in jail, that's all he got, mother God damn. Let that man condition his hair. This is probably the only time he feel free. You know what I'm saying? I said, bruv, bruv, come on. He went, bruv, you know what? I think he might have said, suck your mama, or something like that. So then I was just fucking steamed into him in the shower, soaking but where he was half naked. I don't know, man, but I steamed into him, started punching his head, and he's run out of the showers and said something to the PO. The PO's come in, so it's kicked off. I ain't even gonna lie, Marv, you was tweaking. You, you tweaked out on that one. Like, it's, you just said it was one shower, then there was 20 more showers. Why ain't you going to the other showers? Why you want that, man? See, you was in there bullying <laughs> Off with the PO, I've ended up down the block, and that was it. It's just every day he was just kicking off down that's the block, crazy. back on the wing, kicking off down the block, back on the wing. GRAD. Yeah, I believe you. If that's the shit you was, do if my bad, if that's the stuff you was doing, bullying people out there shower time, man can't even condition his hair because Marvin coming. Marvin, you got a load of hair. You know what it is. <laughs> for a couple of months, 
Like yeah. I want one of them inmates that wanted a, a, a blue band, red band, decat. You didn't give a shit about none of that. No, I just sold okay. gear and got out. Sold gear and got out. I made money when I was in They'll jail. They'll probably happy to out. get you out. Yeah. They'll probably happy to get like you out. Me, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> They'll probably fall no, fight, prison, yes. prison for me was just another stomping ground of networking growing up. Do you know what I mean? But like they say, prison's full of mugs. And it's not like everyone in there is a mug, but come on, man, you keep repeating the same act over and over again, expecting a different result. It's the definition of insanity. Like, it took me 43 years to realise that. So, I mean, come on, man, if it ain't worked for any of us to now, what the fuck do you think it's going to work for you for? And that's the reality of life. Do you know what I mean? These people think it's going to work for them. How? Do you know what I mean? How? Like, it's not possible. If it could have happened. So the mind frame normally is, okay, We've watched the olders mess up. We've, we've watched all their mistakes. The game has changed, so let me try my foot at it, knowing that they've made mistakes and knowing that I'm not going to replicate the same mistakes that they made. Okay. That, that's why they try. But, you know, as, as, as the times change and the criminal gets smarter, the police always get smarter as well. That's that's the part they don't realize. You really not finna out really outsmart them, man. I don't know, man. Like them CIA's and and Interpol's and FBI's and DEA's, boy, they got Harvard graduate graduates. I get it. You a block graduate, or you a or you a uh, flat graduate, but hey, it's a different ball game. It's a game of cat and mouse, and man. I don't really know no mice winning. It would have happened. It would have happened. And like the closest person to achieve that goal was <laughs> Daniel Kinahan. Look what they've done to him. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't even prove a conviction on the man. I can't prove a conviction. They've just given millions of assets back and not nicked him. But they said, if you've got any information that can get him nicked, we'll give you five million quid. What the fuck <laughs> hell about? And if anyone does business with him, we're going to seize all your gear. Why? You can't nick him. You can't convict him. Why? Because he's done nothing wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, he's not doing anything any different than any other country on this planet. Marvin, can you tell us the story of the eye incident? when you what, were shot? Right, we was almost at it. Let's get to oh. it. Yeah. Well, it depends on how deep you want it to go. Tell us all of it. It's a day leading up to the incident. Right, so... I've gone gym. I'm doing some running about, some logistic stuff for my people. Okay. Um, I'm sorting a few bits Is this out. in the UK? No, in Spain. In okay. Spain. Yeah, it's yeah. in, in Marbella yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. So I'm running about doing a few bits. And uh, I get a phone call. And it's a friend of mine who... I heard this story, but it's always good. He gives somebody a watch when I brought them round his house. Okay. So me and you have gone sat round someone's house and your friend has given me a watch. Yeah. Yeah? Then we've okay. left. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've given you the money the following day to yeah. go and pay for the watch. Yep. And I've not gone. Two there. months later, my mate rang me up and said... The fuck's going on? Where's my mate? No, he said, my mate being funny. He said, is your mate going to drop that ready round for the watch? I was like, what watch? When the watch do it? But he'd had about 80 grand, 100 grand off me since, right? So I was like, what do you mean? He ain't paid you. How much was this watch worth? Um, three grand. You know what this, this, this watch story is reminding me of right now? Y'all ever seen that um, with, with uh, Jordan McCain and, and, and all K Coke and, and all the music artists that was, that they, and they did that kind of like futuristic sci-fi musical show what was it called i forgot i was watching it on patreon but it was so trash i was like i'm good <laughs> i had to stop that's the only show I, I think i stopped watching i was like i can't watch this no more bro <laughs> and so it wasn't good to me man but salute for all the actors trying man it's just like but the main thing was focused around the watch i wonder if they got it from there so it was nothing yeah nothing free wearing a panorama that's all it was uh a special edition Ferrari Panerai. That's what it was. And then... Um, so you phoned him up, obviously. I, I said, mate, what are you doing? What are you doing? Go and pay for the watch, you fucking squeak. Do you know what I mean? He said, what's he got to do with you? And then, obviously, I was a lot different then, so I've just gone to you. 
Who are you fucking talking to? What do you mean? What's he got to do with me, you cheeky? My pal's watch. Pay for the watch, I'm going to punch you in him. Simple. I Where are you? Point. So I'm down the pool. I said, all right, sweet. So I drove down. I even got out of my car. I had a 357 snub nose. I pulled it out and gave it to me nephew. And that's how lucky he was, Mark. I went, take that, I'll be back in a minute. He said, what are you doing? I said, like, Mistake number one. <laughs> you feel me? I ain't giving my pipe to nobody. I'm punched. If I was in that situation, you know, just speaking allegedly and hypothetically, you do. Some little poof to Zenin because. Give me the ump, man. He give me the ump, innit? Like, me... <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> like, look. I don't put anyone down, but I'll have a fight with <laughs> any. Do you know what I mean? If I think you're a let's have a row. It's simple. So, without our handicaps, without our moving about, he knows his capabilities. He knows he ain't playing with me. Everyone knows that, like, look, I love a terror. And yeah. I do love a terror. And I'm exceptionally good at it. So I'm told. I've never been beaten. I've had a fight every year of my life and every week of my life when I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like I, said, I haven't had a fight in seven years though, I can guarantee that. Someone's that's attacked good. me, people have attacked me, but I haven't hit anybody in seven years. So tell us, go on. So you've phoned, gone down to the port of Bruce, given given your 357 to your nephew, and then and what? And then basically I've gone down the pool, and I've seen, I've seen his, his governor, his boss. His boss, yeah? Yeah, okay. he's called Mark Carpell. So I've seen him, so I said, where's your mate? He said, oh, he's, he's gone, mate. I said, before what? Yeah. He's gone, oh, I don't know. I said, what do you mean? So I said, do you mind if I sit down a minute, mate? Yeah. I said, he said, why? I said, well, I think you need to know a couple of truths about your mate. So he said, what do you mean? I said, well, do you know this fella? Yeah. He's like, yeah. I said, really? He says, yeah. I said, well, do you know he's been given, I don't know, I can't really remember. It must have been a couple of hundred grand in a couple of months, because I used to earn a lot of money, I used to collect a lot of debts, I used to collect, and I used to, what I used to do, I used to like collecting debts, because I used to take all their watches and cars, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I used to love taking a bad man's watch and car, just yeah. turn up, tooled up, man, and say, Ch -ch -ch. take off your watch, bruv. You old dough, take off your watch, and they've got to take it off, mate, so I used to buzz off that sort of yeah, shit, yeah. take the watches, take the cars, I've even asked people to leave their homes, please don't make me embarrass you in front of your missus, you've got to come out, bruv. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Ah, man. <laughs> but you owe dough, you got to pay, innit? Yeah. And it ain't my fault, you don't owe it to me. Can't pay, Marvin <laughs> Marvin Herbert will take it away. Doing a job, bro. So don't get me a bonus. Do you know what I mean? Don't get me a bonus. I don't really want to do it, mate. Do you know what I mean? No. It was one of them scenarios. So basically, it is. I said to him, your pal's no good. He's this, he's that. So he's then turned around to me and said, well, why don't you go home and I'll bring him down to the gym tomorrow? Yeah. So I said, no, nah, mate, if he's going to get a tool, he can use the tool when he comes back to fact. Cause to oh, he wouldn't got a tool you. He wouldn't, he, okay. Because he's he, cause you told him, you spoke to him, and he was like, yo, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up, and you got a reputation already. So he like, hold on, no, no, okay, put up then, but ho okay, hold on real quick. I'm finna go get the, yeah, yeah, I'm finna go get the yeek, yeek. <laughs> I'm finna go get the bleak, bleak. But little do he know, you think of him as my, this still my butt, this still my boy to a certain extent, but I just wanna, you know, let's talk, let's fight it out, let's duke it out, cause you my boy, I ain't gonna come at you like that. Ooh, so let me hand the snub nose, the 357, and my little, the people that's riding with me. I'm going to go in here naked. You get in there, talk to his boss. His boss tell you to your face, he went to go get the pipe. And you did what? To me, he was always a bit overweight, a bit plumpy. Like, and I actually want so to you work. actually thought he was going to get like a gun? I thought he was going to get a bat or a blade. Or okay, I didn't think he'd get a gun. Yeah, I just, was I what you thought a tool was? You thought a tool was a bat? Okay. Because we had a ride. We, had, we, we, we trained in the gym together. He was working with my driver. He drove with me everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I get it. You thought y'all had that rapport where it wasn't going to go to that. Okay. Like, he was working so he with me. He knew what you was about yeah, as well. He was, yeah, he was working with me. He was like working with me. He knew he had to fucking kill me, this kid. Do you know what I mean? He was working with me. He, his arsehole went on a bit of work we went on. We went and put it on a... So what, when, when did it click? It never clicked to you like, hey, 
Let me go back to the car. A couple of um, Romanians, not Romanians, um, Bulgarians and Russians yeah. for um, three and a half million quid. Yeah, and I was getting 1.2 million quid after we got the gaff back and we got 150 quid advance yeah. to go and get a load of people. Basically, someone on you rented a, a, a villa to a load of um, Bulgarian gangsters to turn it into a brothel. Okay. So they've turned it into a brothel, but I never paid no rent for a couple of years and fucked the geezer off. But now the banks are going to repossess the ass. So the geezer come back to me and said, look, we're going to repossess the ass. If you can get these geezers out, I'll have a split with you. So he said, look, I'll give you a million quid after we go through. And I said, well, I need to take for my teammate. My team is all going, well, we might get Nick, what? And he went, all right, well, how much do you want? I said, we need 50 grand each, mate, there's three of us. So he said, all right, sweet. So he gave us the first 75 grand, 50 grand. I'm going, well, we might get Nick go through. And I said, well, I need to... So he said, look, I'll give you a million quid after we go through. A, mi a million quid? And I said, well, I need to take it from my team, mate. My team was all going, well, we might get Nick, what? And he went, all right, well, how much do you want? I said, we need 50 grand each, mate. There's three of us. So he said, all right, sweet. It's 150 grand less than a million quid? How much is a... Hey, Siri. How much is one million quid American? I'm confused. Did he? I don't think he meant to say a million quid. <laughs> so he gave us the first 75 grand and I went and put it on the phone. But then the day I've gone out there, I've got the little firm out and then I'm about to go back the following day. And as I've turned up the following day, I'm with the geezer that shot me, yeah? And as we pull up outside, there's eight to 12 men. It could have been 10, it could have been 12. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a little bit more than There's a little squad. Yeah. And, mate, I thought, come, we've got to get out. He went, I ain't getting out. So I had to get out on my own. Because now they've seen me, I've got a front yeah. right? So basically, the day before, I'd gone to the geezer I've gone to the villa and there's a geezer in the villa that's looking after the villa. So I've asked him, like, because I've just got out of jail. So I've got my license papers, right? So I've said to him, I've just got out of jail, mate. What are you doing in my house? Yeah. He's going, what are you doing? I said, this is my house, mate. What are you doing here? He's going, well, it's not. I'm, I'm here, my boss, my boss. I was like, what do you mean, your boss? So as he's turned around, that's when I've seen Oasis, which is the lap dancing gaff in Estepona, where everyone in the port used to go, right? So I was like, yeah, yeah. So then I've gone straight down the club and I've Walked in there, booted the office door open, grabbed the geezer, threw him against the wall, stuck it on him. I want my money, you fucking cunt, you've done my ass, my ass is getting repossessed. So now my ass is being repossessed. I've just got out of jail. My ass is being ripped, so I played that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means I've gone in there, but you fucking cunt, my ass, uh, oh, my problem, uh, blah, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out. I was like, oh, anyway, God, it was not me, it's not me, it's my partner. Come and see my partner. So I went and see his partner, told him the same shit. I'm not having it, I want my gaff, I want my money, you'd get me a big deal. I've just come out of jail. Bruv, I'll kill people for this shit. And he's like, oh, well, relax. So his partner went me, listen. Okay, I get it. My partner's a bit of a dog. He said, but what I'll do, come and see me tomorrow. I'll give you a lump of reddies and I'll give you half of the club. So I was like, yeah. He's like, yeah, come down about four o'clock and we'll have a chat. So I like, lovely, I'll speak to tomorrow. Spanish fella. Boom. So the next day when I've turned up, yeah. there's that geezer and another firm of lumpy geezers. I've turned up all fuck. And I've got yeah, you should have known that was cat. They was buying time. <laughs> I was trying to get it together for you. Come on, he went, I ain't going. So now I'm about to get out of the car on my own. So I just walked straight up to the geezer who told me to be there. Yeah, yeah. I said, did you bring my money, bro? So the Russians next to him, my brother. I was like, did you bring my money, bro? My brother. I said, you got my money, bro? My brother. I, said, I ain't come here to speak to people, you know. I've come to speak to you. Are you going to pay me my money? And then the Russians going, we can go the easy way or the hard way. So I've just sort of switched on him like that and put my hand down the back of my trousers like I had a tool. Yeah. And I never had a tool, but I was one of them, I'm going, I'm yeah, going, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going, do you know what I mean? So I, I, so I was just switched on, I said, mate, I want to ask you one fucking question. One question. Are you going to pay me my fucking money? Yes or no? And he went, you take hashish? I said, yeah, I'll take hashish. And he said, then you get paid. I said, no problem, when? He said, come back tomorrow. So then I said, all right, so I went back tomorrow, I got a bit of puff. They never had all the puff to give me, because obviously... They didn't have enough time to get it. No, a ton of puff is only 160 grand, 170 grand to you at the source. 
Do you know what I mean? Might be 234, 230 to 300 in Spain if you're not connected. Do you know what I mean? But if you're connected, you get a ton for 300 grand in Spain. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's down there, yeah, yeah. Welva, <coughs> San Luca, San Sebastian, all down there, you get it cheap. Do you know what I mean? So, when they've said to me, you're going to take cash, they've got to bring a, what? What, are you going to give me 50 bits or 60 bits? No, 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 it's got to be tonnes, isn't it? you you got a couple of hundred grand, you've got a couple of million quid, it's, it's lump. So, when, have turned up to give me, I think they give me 100 grand and a, f- a few hundred bits of puffs. So I've given it to someone. And then I got shot, yeah. So go on, go on, back to the shot story. Right, so then... So he's gone to go get a tool. You're and, sat with his boss. And then basically he just walked up there. And I went, there he is, and I got up. Yeah. As I walked towards him, he's went like that. Yeah. And I said, well, go on then. He pulled the gun out. And I was, so I was just walking towards him thinking, pull it up. Because the minute he pulls it up, I was going to grab, grab it. Because I've the, man, the mad thing about life is I've been around that sort of like, I'm not that I'm fucking hard, but I know how to deal with certain situations. What a lot of people don't realise is how guns work. Do you know what I mean? So if you grab a gun and twist it, they can't yeah. shoot you. It's, it's logical. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you grab a gun, by, if it's an automatic and you grab it by the handle tight enough, it can't fire, it will backfire on them. Do you know what I mean? Because it don't, it can't move. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because the hammer don't, yeah. it's, it's just, if you do, the you know, thing, but if you know, if you use them, you know how to, how yeah, to yeah, yeah, you know how, you can know how to deflect you them. You better like, grab that mark with t- tight, you better grab it confidently. <laughs> you just, it's just, anyway, you just, I'm not saying I'm bulletproof, but if you pulled a gun out to me and you got close enough, that was in my head. I thought, as soon as he pulls it up, I'm going to be able to grab, grab it. it. Do you know what I mean? So I was walking towards him knowing he's going to do that, and then I could grab it. But he fucking shot me in my leg, never come up. Do you know what I mean? So oh, he, he, he come up and done me in my leg. So as I was waiting for the hand to come up, he never come up, he shot just me in my leg. And when he shot me in my leg, it hit, me, it hit the deck straight away. So when, once I beat the deck, my leg shattered. When I beat the deck, I just said, well, get on with your fucking job, you fat. I said, go on, <laughs> go on, because you know you got to kill me. Do you know what I mean? Like, and he shot me again. Where? The first one through the leg, and I fell over, I fell down, and I've gone to get up. And as I went to get up, he shot me through my arm, and he went through my arm, off the floor, through my pelvis, and out my spine. Damn! Yeah. And then I fell back down again, and as I tried to get up, he shot me in my... He went down my willy and shot my right testicle into my pants and I fell back and it was as I was getting back up is when he walks over and went bang. That bang. story never is not intense. Getting back I mean, up is when he walks over and went bang, bang. That's all I remember. All I remember is seeing the bullet coming down and hitting me in my and I'm thinking I'm going to die. And I remember, then I had him running off or walking off, and I was. How the fuck did you survive that? I don't know. No, no one knows. Even the bullet flattened in my eye. It flattened. I'll show you. How the fuck did you survive that? Seriously. I don't know. My femoral artery got punched in three places. They said I'll never ever walk again. And I had, and a, I had a professional fight. And what happened to the guy that done that? Is he still about? Yeah, they, they went and handed themselves in. Oh, you did. Yeah, they went and handed themselves in with prepared statements that said I was a paid hitman that come to kill him and he, I pulled the gun out to shoot him and it went off five times accidentally in the struggle. That's what they said. And I never went to court, I never made a statement and basically he got, I think, eight years for it, got repatriated after half and got out over here. Wow. Mm. I did actually move to uh, Basildon to grab hold of him though. I did, I did, I come, I did what happened, right? So, did you catch him? I didn't, I, no, no, because I put, what happened, this is how mad life is, right? So. I've come back to England, yeah, when I knew he got out. And now the thing, what he, what he didn't know is, um, and I'll tell him now because was, nothing was going to happen, but his girlfriend was an ex-girlfriend of one of my mates. Yeah. So where we were standing, I had his address. He didn't even realise. Has anyone heard this story before? No. Nah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, my boy, you're getting an exclusive. <laughs> no, because it's all dead to me now. I can talk about it. I mean, yeah, yeah. My life ain't about that no more. So the girlfriend that he got out to, yeah, she was an ex-girlfriend of a mate of mine, so I had his address. So I moved. He was from Brentwood and all around that area. So I come back from Spain yeah. and moved to Basildon. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I went to Brentwood Virgin every day. 
right? And I was building a program and a plan to get him, take his hands, take his feet and take his eyes. That's what I was going to do. I was going to chop his feet off, chop his hands off and then take his eyes and then just leave him. That's what I was going to, and I was going to do it, man. And then so when I've come over to do Is all... Is that the same place where they film grilling? Yeah, I know the show, show on the, the TV, like the YouTube show, Grilling. I think it's on Outstanding TV or, or something, some channel, I forget. Damn it. it looks like the same place where they film Grilling, though. All of that, I've sort of, now I'm going to do all of that. My daughters need to go boarding school. So I need to put them in boarding school and be able to pay for it for the next 10 years because if anything happens to me, I'm fucked. Yeah. Right? So then basically, one of my daughters went to the best school in the country. The other one went to another school in Ascot. And I'm like, yeah, good. And then one day I got a phone call from the school. Yeah, and they said, oh, Mr. Herbert, uh, um, is there any chance you could come and see us? We'd like to have a discussion about something. I said, discussion about what? They said, well... Mm, to put it frankly, Mr. Herbert, it's about your history, your past <laughs> behaviours. We wanted to know if there'd be uh, any any issues. That yeah. No, 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 no. The schools, I'm not. I weren't like that. I weren't. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. The girls are fine. Nothing's going to come. My life's not going to come affect the school or nothing. No one's going to come looking for me. Or it's not going to happen. So I was like, all right, sweet. So from that point there. When I said, you know what, enough's enough. I can't do this. That's always your kids, man. I tell you all the time. Is when you got kids and you in that lifestyle, and stuff starting to affect them or starting to affect your mental uh, because you got kids, it's time to give it up, man. And it, it just no, how, don't matter how gangster you are and how violent. Perfect example, man. Especially when you got like trauma with your parents and whatnot. So it'd be like that. Because I've got to be here for them. My eldest son and daughter, I failed them, and they don't love me as they should now. Do you know what I mean? They only love me how they want because of what they believe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But if they knew what I've been through and for why I've done it, and they actually understood me, which they will eventually, I think the relationship will grow then, you know, so. So be before this podcast started, I said to you, Marvin, at the end of the podcast, I'm gonna ask you one question, yeah? And I said to you, I wanna know who is the most powerful person you have in your phone book. Depends what field you and want. You, you've already phoned Harry Redknapp live on the podcast, which, listen, that shocked me. I gotta be fair with you. I was like, when you said, hey, Sue, you phoned Harry Redknapp? I was like, yeah, right, in your dreams, and then boom. Yo, what's going on, mate? I was like, oh shit, this guy knows Harry Redknapp. Call Harry Redknapp. Calling Harry Redknapp. Oh. <laughs> nah. <laughs> How we doing, Harry? I'm absolutely amazing. I'm just... That's tough. What if Marv got ratio dead on a podcast while he was trying to cap? That's a good, hey, hey, that's a good, that's excellent. That's an excellent move. When it, when you, when it works out, when you actually hit that phone call and they pick up, guaranteed if I called somebody right now, they're not even going to pick up. <laughs> I ain't even going to One of my pals about to do a podcast, right? They didn't believe on you, yeah. <laughs> Daniel Kinnan, to me, he's my friend. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care what he thinks of me. <laughs> I really don't. Do you know what I mean? But what he's done for me and this isn't financial or yeah. criminal because we never made money together right we never made money together right i always made money on my own made money myself done things myself right so my relationship with him was more about morals and principles do you know what i'm saying well, that's what it was morals and principles why'd you do this why'd you do that i'm like Burr. he's like no nah, that ain't life marv that's not life that's not life. Like life is for living. Life is for building. Like how I speak now is how he spoke to me. Like I'm only straight now because he told me I was wasting my life. What are you doing? This madness. Like you can do so much more. Like you're this, you're that. I mean, he just, you know, he just motivated me, inspired me. Like even after the shooting, I was going to get my leg chopped off, right? And I went to see him one day, and I was fuming. Like, like I was in pain. Like I was in pain, like you couldn't imagine. I've gone to see him one day and I said, look, Dan, like, I want to get my leg chopped off, mate. Like, can I get a bit of help to get this leg chopped off? I want to get a blade, though. 
but I ain't got the readies to get a blade. I don't know how much, there might be a couple hundred grand, blah, blah. I want to get my leg chopped off, get a blade, but no, the Pretorius blade. So I went to him, I said, look, I ain't got no readies, but I want to get it, I can't get about it, it's painful, I can't do this, I can't do that. And he said to me, Marv, do you know what? He said, once it's gone, it's gone. He said, why don't you just give it a year? Just give it a year, mate. He said, you've been through too much to just throw it away now, you know? Yeah, imagine walking around with a, no eye, no leg. That'd have been crazy. I'm glad you had a friend like that to tell you stick it through, man. Because friends like that are hard to come by nowadays, especially in 2023, man. Long, 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 long time friends that really helped you in hard times. If you really think about it, if you're watching this, really think about it. How many of them you got? <laughs> Probably not a lot. <laughs> come on. In other words, look, come on, look what you've been through. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, not over yet, kind of thing. It ain't over, like, to give it a year. You can suffer this for a year. And I thought, said, no, if I can't suffer this for a year, who am I? So I went on for a year, and then a year later, well, 18 months later, I had a fight on a world title undercard. It was uh, Sergio Martinez production. Uh, Manilva Martinez, D. Williams was fighting for his world title or defending his world title, I can't remember. Now, there was a young Spanish champion that was showing Sergio Martinez his skills. Right? Yeah, yeah. So he got put on the show to show Sergio Martinez, this is a kid for you to sign, yeah? Against me. <laughs> 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 Tell me you knocked him out. I, no, I never... I, 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 he, hit, he hit the deck. Like, I've hit him. Like, I've got the clip on the video. You can see it. I've hit him, yeah? Come on, me, pat, pat. And he's gone backwards, nearly, he went, nearly went down. He, he touched his hand down. Yeah. And another one, he dropped and got back up. Do you know what I mean? Did but, you win the fight? Yeah, 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 we're about to shut up. We're about to shut up, punch his head in. You should see it clearly. I'll show you the thing in a minute. When we finish, I'll show you. I've got a, it's on YouTube, uh, uh, edited version. Someone's put it out there. The, the um, highlights, you know, I just punch his head in. And he retired. And when we come out, gone to the changing rooms after, he's sitting there and I've gone like that. Took me finger out. Because you ain't even seen my limp yet, have you? No, I, I didn't see your limp, no. No, no, see, 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 see. This is what I'm saying to you, because look, I'll show you now. On that leg, I'm six foot three. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. And you had the fight like that? Yeah, yeah, I had the fight with all that. I've, had, I'm, I've just got better like this. Life, man. Right? In that room. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna speed past that. Like I didn't just see what I seen. First of all, you six foot three on one leg and then you five eleven on the other leg? Like what's going on? They had to cut a piece of your leg? Like or, or or was you like naturally born like? Can we get an explanation? In the world is something that I'm glad I went through. And I'm glad I Would went through. Would you change your life if you could? Um if someone could turn around to you and say, Marvin you get a reset button, but you're not allowed to be involved in crime. Would you take it? Yeah. You genuinely would? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. 100%, no million shadow. Percent, million percent. And do you regret anything in your life? Being a criminal. You regret everything you've done? Well, no, no, no. I only done what I had to do to get out, bruv. Yeah, so people committing crime because of their egos. I didn't give a fuck who you were, yeah? I wanted out, so stand in my way, I'm fucking taking it, bruv. I went out and I robbed security vans and so I could get as much money to buy products. I bought products to get as much money as I could to get out. And then I realised I couldn't get out. I couldn't get out. So I thought, fuck it, I'll start again. So when I, I, I went through that fucking world to get... To you, it was in your 40s. For 40-some years you did that. Insanity. You just said it at the beginning. I get you. Through the top to get out. And when I got to the top, I realised you can't get out. Because it's like... The amount of puff, the amount of money you reinvest to get your end product is got too many people involved. You've got to partner up with too many groups abroad. Like, it's not simple. Do you know what I mean? Like, to buy a ton of sniff, there's four or five people involved. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't buy a ton on your own because it doesn't make sense. It's seven million quid, eight million quid, so you don't do it. You get three or four firms to chip in with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. do it in a certain way, a co-op, like, it's just what people do, it's business. Do you know what I mean? You get it to, you buy it peanuts, you get it, you sell it, you switch off. All the others come home and pretend to be gangsters. All the others have switched <laughs> off and having fun with their yachts, their flights, their everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All the others are running around pretending to be Al Capone. Yeah? 
And that's what I don't get. They're all Al Capone fucks that ain't got no arsehole. They've got no arsehole. They've got no arsehole. And I can tell you that now. They have no arsehole. They all talk a good fight. They've got watches. They're all big fat cunts. I ain't never heard nobody say they got no a-hole. That's, that's different. I'm telling you, UK got some of the most... The way y'all put together curse words or the way y'all put together insults is bar none the best. Some of the best insulters in the world. <laughs> look at them all. <laughs> look at all the villains now. They're all big fat because they're whatless. They looked after themselves. They've just eh. <laughs> fat, greedy, no good cunts, mate. A lot of them. And that's all they are. Grooming, no good, greedy cunts that have realised they can't do it no more. Now some of them are living off their mother's assets and legacy. Some of them are living off bread and butter. And some of them are clutching at stores on social media. Do you know what I mean? I'm actually using social media as a platform to launch what's coming. Yeah, because I know... As you should, that's what it's for. I use that world to survive. I yeah. use that world to grow. I use that world to learn. And it taught me nothing but headache dramas and fucking deceit. And what I realised is everybody I come across on that world was a <laughs> Simple. And that 2% of them wasn't. The rest of them are Greedy, selfish, miserable, whingy, moaning Yeah? Facts. So I used to do things with people in certain ways. And I used to pay for products from the far gap with some people. Just invest certain things with people. Right, and then just think about like this. So we'd invest in the far gaff, invest in European gaffs, invest in things. So we're investing our time and our effort in getting nicked, right? And then we take a, a risk to get it home, and then we take a risk to give it to someone, and then they try to tell me that I'm not doing them a favour. How? You ain't taking no risk. You ain't doing this. You ain't doing that. So all you got to do is cash Collect. it out. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the only thing you're doing is risking your liberty to cash it out. And I'm a right, so the way it's set up was I used to do people favours and give them a rock prices and, and then they used to go, oh, fuck me, and I used to have the money. So well, how could you fuck me if I'm helping you? Yeah. How could you spend all my money? One kid, well, he got 120 grand worth of products, right? And went and bought himself a Rolex, a BMW, and an R1, right? <laughs> yeah. I said, where's my money? He said, oh, it's coming. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean it's coming? How the fuck have you got a bike and a car? And a oh, Rolex. I've got, I've got, no, you ain't, mate, you stupid looking. Go and get rid of it and bring me my money. I've got a problem, you stupid. <laughs> yeah. What's the matter with you? You ain't done my dough. You ain't, you ain't done the work yet. Yeah. Like, come on, pay. So that world is just full of weak, grooming, no good, deviant that have got nothing better to do and be lazy, gluttonous, greedy, and they are. They. I really, I'm really starting to think that Marvin has a thing against obese people. <laughs> All of them, they're greedy. Like, I can buy a ton of puff for 165 grand and give it to your people for 800 or 900 quid. Back in the day, it was 2,200 quid. So the older villains are even worse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because the prices ain't changed in Morocco. For three decades, four decades, five decades, it ain't changed. Do you know what I mean? No more than a hundred pound a kilo in Morocco. And then you gotta get it from Morocco to Spain. They usually put forty grand on that. Do you know what I mean? And then usually twenty or thirty grand to get it home. Do you know what I mean? And that's what it costs. And that's what it costs to get puffed from Morocco here. And everyone charges through the boat. And then they're my pals. No, they're not your pals. You're just a fucking product that they're waiting to get thrown under a bus. That's why I got out of it. Too many snakes in the game. They're all grasses. Now, what I know is this, yeah? I've done bird for everything. Yeah? yeah? I know people in the drug game that ain't done no bird. Do you know what I mean? But they've been all day. Now, if you're in the drug game and the police are not looking to drive you mad, then you've got to ask a simple question. Why? Why? I'm nicked. There's South London and West London villains all around me. Top of the fucking tree, right? Top of the tree. Millions of pound gaffes, millions of pound products, millions of pounds lifestyle, right? They're known for feeding all the youngsters. They're known for getting everything for the youngsters. They're know, known for everything for the youngsters. I think I know where he's trying to go with this. Yeah, the youngsters get nicked for 19 murders, but none of the old lot get nicked. 
trying to say they're working work? with the boys. When the old lot delivered the fucking machine guns to do the job. Yeah. No one gets nicked. No one gets their collar felt. We all get nicked and put on the KA unit. How does that work? And then we got told that, don't worry, son, you're all right. We're going to get you out of it. Did you know, and I'll tell you a fact, one of the major London gangsters, I won't mention his name at this date because it is facts, right? And I'm going to get the person in front of me that said it, right? Come on the visit and said this to me. I'm for, we're getting 36 years recommended. That's what the starting point for this sentence was, right? Yeah. So then an old friend of mine come on a visit and told me he's got me out of it. He's got me out of it. He's got me out of it. I said, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, but escape, da, 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 on the run, out the van, out the bus, out the... I said, yeah, how are we going to do that? Facts. Right, and I will name this fella eventually, right? And I am gonna because there's just no value, mate. And people have died, people have suffered, and people have fucking gone to prison for okay, people forever. Okay. So, what this cunt said to me, right, is we got you out of this, but you got to go on the informant's register. I said, what? He said, you got to go on the informant's register. He said, he's with us. You're sweet. Nothing's gonna happen. You go on the informant's register. <coughs> We'll get you out. We'll get you out. Don't worry. I said, fuck that. I said, I'm going Europe, mate. I said, I can't be on no register. They get eye me out in Europe. Fuck that. I'm going Europe, mate. Fuck it. I'll take my chances. And if they give me 36 years, I'm going to fucking escape. I don't give a fuck. I'll go on the run for the rest of my life. I've asked my missus already, would you live on the run with me? She said, yes. I don't give a fuck. I'm going on the run. Do you know what I mean? And I knew that. I'm going on the run. You ain't holding me in prison. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You ain't doing it, mate. It ain't happening. I know I'll get out. I knew I'll get out. It's not an issue. I've got a load of my mates. Well, I'm aware of a load of people who got out of prison in the <laughs> 90s. Yeah. And, and I know, I'm aware, and I know a lot of people who got out of prison. And in fact, three of my closest friends got off a sweatbox and another 16 got off a coat. So... I know people done things and people escaped from prison. I know people escaped from Pentonville. I know people escaped from Feltham. I know people escaped from Scrubs. Do you know what I mean? So I know people who escaped from prisons. So I knew I would have escaped. So I said, fuck that, man. Fuck that about informants. There's, there's over 10,000 informants in the UK that are getting no, paid. Let me explain something. Let me explain something. Let me explain something. Right, right. So they're not called informants no more. And they're not called grasses no more. They're called covert intelligent sources. It all means the same shit, don't yeah, it? Yeah, covert intelligent sources. Cheers, right? There's some people that don't even know they're informants. They, they didn't gave them a proper name. Imagine no. that, right? So just imagine that, yeah? Yeah. You're a top shotter. Yeah. Top shotter. The busiest line, smashing it, and everyone's coming to your house to get gear. Why do you think there's always a house on every estate that never gets raided? It's in a foreman's house. No, it's not. See, that's what you believe, but it's not. It's a strategy. Oh, so I'm going to release the strategy now so people know. Go on. Right. So you're serving up. Yeah. You're serving up the creamiest gear. Everyone knows you've got the creamiest gear. So I'll just leave you. Let you serve it up. And I'll wait for Mr. Big to turn up. Then I'll follow Mr. Big to Mr. Mr. Big. And I follow Mr. Big to Mr. 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 Big. Do you understand? That's what yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. So they get the network and then they get the big people. They get that bit of network. Crash. Don't nick you, though. Yeah. No, because you're going to go and find a product again. You're going to find a product again. Yeah, yeah. And then you go back to work. So you're like a sweet grass without even realising it. Yeah, it's true, to be fair. And that's all they do. It's your systems. Business systems. Business systems. Even prison is a business system. It's a system. So I'm learning all these systems. He's saying that, man. It's the same thing when they let nah, all, of these, all of these people, you know, every, somebody's an informant somewhere. Somebody's a, somebody, police are corrupt somewhere. But somebody's always got to, you know, there's always like a quota that has to be met. So when these cops be finding these, oh, we just got our biggest bus. No, that ain't your biggest. But they let you have that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The big, 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 big. They let you have that. It's kind of like, kind of like the same. I don't. Know.
I'm using them at my benefit to help my youngsters and our youth to not commit crime. So that's what we're going, what we're doing and how we're doing it. And it's just next level stuff we'll be doing now. Marvin, truthfully, I could sit here and talk to you all fucking day because your stories are... Do you know what it is? It's, it's, it's crazy meeting someone who has actually lived it. Because there's a lot of people who you can speak to and they've been in prison for two years. They've been in prison for one year. And they've not re-offended, which that's good. Yeah, I respect people who they make a mistake, they come out and they change. But you've lived a life that only very, 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 very few people can say they've lived a similar life. There's not been a man I've met in my in my lifetime so far who has... you got to turn Marvin Mike down. Let's be breathing in it. Got stories... And I know people that vouch that your stories are real as well, so it's not like you're sitting here bullshitting me. No, no, come on, come on, come on. I I know people who have said, yeah, yeah, his stories are true. Listen to him. So it's crazy to sit here and talk to you. And the way you've changed your life around, just on a positive note with what you're doing with the youth is mental. If you can do it, anyone who says they can't do it can do it. Yeah, and no, I've got a mentor and a young kid now. Yeah. You're gonna have him on his next level, and I want to bring him through now. I'm gonna so off the back of me, I'm gonna create another product called Luke Collins Walker. Yeah, and he's next level. He's next level, young Luke. And uh, yeah, I'm mentoring him to success. So I'm gonna have a product to show people what I can do, live, real life, everything. Because it's not about the crime shit. Like all these cunts that go out and they're out drinking. Sniffing, partying. It's all for what? Like, and all the kids now, that's what I was talking about. Like, like you know, the uh, chicken shop kids, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to start calling them the shitty finger kids. Right? Because look, right, all the kids in the trap houses, yeah? Yeah. They're working in trap houses, yeah? So they're going county lines. Yeah. Yeah. How are they getting the gear there? You tell me. Up their ass. Yeah. So what do you think they've got to do when they get to their gaff? They have a shit. Right. And they've got to serve it up. What do you think they do? Put it on the side or back up their ass in case the police come? Back up their ass. Okay, so it's getting in and out of their ass all day then, isn't it? So what's on their fingers? Shit. So what are they eating all day? <laughs> Shit. They want to come and shake your hands. So that's where they've got the spudding from. Well, I've met people, it's a handshake. Yeah. You knew a man by the, sh- the firmness of his handshake, right? All of a sudden, 2000s, just hand spuds everywhere. No one shakes hands. Why? Because they've all got shit on their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> been digging their assholes out for none of how long. Think about it. Like, it's true. When you say it like, when you, when you say it like that, it's true. All the nitties, all the nitties yeah. are the shoplifters, right? All the thieves, all the burglars. Yeah. Right? So before they used to be proper people. The people, I know people made a living out of shoplifting. I know people made a living out of burglary. Proper family members, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, nah, it's all gone because everyone's a shitty finger crew. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone's serving drugs up, and everyone. If you're, if you're a criminal, you're selling drugs, mate. Like before, you had oysters, you had robbers. Now you've got a couple of robberies now and then, a couple of smash and grabs now and then, but there's no real planned gear. No. They're all shook members, mate, and they're snatching things in the heat of the moment, shooting people in the heat of the moment. All the gangsters out there now ain't got He's very great. no arse. They can't even run up on people and do them properly. Shooting people from a distance. Do you know what I mean, like, there's there's protocols to doing things. In America, they be getting up on you. So that's why we were different. If I had a problem with you, I'm coming to you direct in front of you, and things happened, didn't it? So I'm not proud of the life we led. I'm not proud of the things we've done. But what we've done, we've done very seriously, and it and it was for a reason. There was a purpose behind everything. So. I live with a clear conscience because I've done badness to bad people that wanted badness done to them. Simple. So if you knew, yeah, don't stroke the dog, it'll bite you. Why are you gonna stroke the dog? Yeah, it's true. So you know what you're playing with when you come in my world. Everyone knew what I was. So I mean, I never lied to no one. This is how it is. This is how it's gotta be. This is what I wanna do. What do you mean I can't? <laughs> that was what I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Listen. So, Marvin, it was a pleasure having you on here. Genuinely, I could talk to you all day and we could go around for hours and hours, but I need to, we need to end it somewhere because there needs to be a part two in the future. Because right now, this is it. In terms of views, a little bit before, but we're ahead of you. From uh, that's it. TLO.
This is a good one, man. The Brew Tick Show. I gotta see what else y'all got on here. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let's take a let's take a look real quick, man. The Blue Tick Show. Let's see videos. Let's see popular. Let's see. You got Gypsy Billionaire Son owning a nightclub at 16, sentenced to prison for 99 years, been hatchet. You got out on death row in Dubai at 19. The biggest lawyer exposes. Okay. That's some decent stuff. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.